and looking at beans for a minute, because we're looking at beans as an example, because we can put all the carbohydrate-containing foods on a hierarchical scale of quality, and I could have made it 50 foods long, but I just chose, <laughs> I just chose like 10 foods, and we can show the amount of resistant starch and the amount of fiber and the result and the amount of nutrients in that food and the anti-cancer potential and phytochemicals and, mi and micronutrients in that food. And here's what I'm telling you. I'm saying that beans have the most fiber and have the most anti-cancer phytonutrients compared to other carbohydrate sources. They're the lowest glycemic. And your body breaks, and, they have, and they're full of inositol pentacus phosphate, which is a powerful anti-cancer substance that doesn't let tumors grow and causes apoptosis of, of abnormal cells. Incredibly protection against cancer. And you know inositol pentacus phosphate has such powerful anti-cancer effects because it's 26 letters long. <laughs> but here what I'm saying is that these beans, look at the amount of fiber and resistant starch. All the, all the potential to produce the healthy bacteria. The reason people don't digest beans well and beans produce gas is because they don't eat them regularly enough so they haven't built up enough of the bacteria to digest the resistant starch in beans so they produce more gas. When you start eating beans every single day then your body builds up all the healthy bacteria that aids in their digestion and unfortunately you stop producing all that gas. How come nobody even smiled at that one? Thank you. The word unfortunately was a joke. I guess you don't get that because you didn't live the life I lived. Okay. Some jokes are like you only get yourself, kind of like, you know what I mean? Beans and cancer. Beans and cancer. You eat beans, you have lower rates of cancer. Why in the nurse's health study, if I'm saying that greens, like cruciferous green vegetables, are the most protective food against cancer, then how come in the nurse's health study, beans showed the most protection against breast cancer? How come? No? You don't know that one? Because they weren't eating enough, because nobody was eating enough green vegetables there. There weren't any high consumers of green vegetables as a whole in the group, but there were people eating more beans. More people eating, like, you know, whatever their heritage, their diet from the heritage where the country has come. We've I saw those people eating high bean diets, they had less breast cancer. There was no group eating high, more greens. But we do have studies from other groups eating high green diets, and it shows incredibly dr dramatic effects on cancer. But the goal is what to do. Is it beans or greens? What is it we're supposed to do? Both. Both. Now, IGF-1 is called insulin-like growth factor 1, and it's called insulin-like because it binds to the insulin receptor and also promotes angiogenesis and, and tissue growth that drives cancer and fat storage. You know what the word angiogenesis means? Yes? Who doesn't know what it means? Angiogenesis means... Angiogenesis... I can't look down and talk. Angiogenesis means the growth of new blood vessels. The word angio means blood vessels. Genesis means to make new. So fat cells secrete angiogenesis promoters, which says, blood vessels grow into me. Bring me more oxygen and more sugar and more nutrients so I can get fatter. Fat cells promote their own growth. And the more you eat insulin and IGF-1, both insulin and IGF-1 promote angiogenesis. They accelerate fat growth and they accelerate the production of angiogenesis-promoting hormones from fat cells. Cancerous tumors secrete angiogenesis factors too, because cancers, when the cell becomes abnormal, they want it replicates very rapidly, and it can't replicate rapidly unless it gets a new blood supply, a lot of blood and a lot of glucose, sugar coming in. So it secretes hormones that make blood vessels grow to it and supply it with oxygen and glucose so it can replicate. You can't have cancers developing without angiogenesis promoting hormones because blood vessels won't grow to fuel the cancer. Mushrooms and onions and green vegetables, all these pomegranates and cherries have anti-angiogenic effects. They say, no way, Jose, I'm not letting you put fat on your body. They're anti-fat storage, the opposite of oil and sugar. They say, no way, Jose, I'm not letting you get cancer. They must be bilingual. They say it in Spanish. No way, Jose.
But IGF-1 is elevated by animal protein, whereas, whereas insulin is, is most promoted by sugar and high glycemic carbohydrates. High glycemic carbohydrates do, at, do increase the secretion of IGF-1, but not as much as animal products do. Animal protein in particular increases IGF-1, and higher levels of IGF-1 are associated with the aging of the brain, aging of your body, fat storage, and increased rate of cancer. We have to keep a relatively low amount of IGF-1 if you want to live to be 100. That means if you're on a diet that has a lot of animal protein, like a paleo diet or a ketogenic diet, you can't live a long time. You're paying the devil, and you're saying, I want to lose some weight, I don't care if I drop dead young. Because let me just tell you one thing before I go on with this lecture. We give studies more credence if they follow, have three different criteria. Because why listen to me and why have any faith in what I'm telling you? Why can't you just believe the next guy that comes up on the stage? And he tells you that it's better to eat a ketogenic diet of all meat and oil. Why don't you listen to him? He'll show you some slides of people that lost weight. He'll show you some studies of people that dropped their glucose level. Why believe me? I'm telling you the answer to that question right now, okay? Because we give studies more credence if they involve many thousands of people. That's one, large numbers of people. Number two, they go on for decades. And number three, they look at hard endpoints like death or cancer or heart attacks or strokes. Not short-term studies, soft endpoints like they lost weight or dropped their cholesterol that went on for a year or two. I could give you a diet of nothing but Twinkies and it'll work. It'll be a great diet the Twinkie diet. Because you can't eat that. If you're just eating Twinkies, you get sick of Twinkies. And you can't eat too many calories. After a thousand calories, you give up. You're sick of eating Twinkies already. It's like... <laughs> and you lose weight, and you look good. Your health will improve for a year or so. You'll probably take 30 years off your life, or more. But you got some short-term benefits. Let me just say one thing here. Losing weight on any method is of no benefit at all. Only weight loss that you keep off for the rest of your life is of a benefit. Anything you do short term to lose weight is of no benefit because the weight's not going to stay off you unless you keep doing what you did to lose it for the rest of your life. The weight is not going to stay off. It's going to come back. And when the weight comes back, it's more dangerous than the weight that came off you. Because as you gain weight, you put more saturated fat on your body as you rapidly gain weight, and the fat pack becomes more visceral. So dieting on these crazy diets to lose and gain weight and to yo-yo your weight is not good for your health. The only safe way to lose weight, if you're overweight, is to eat a diet style that has anti-cancer and longevity-promoting effects so you can stay eating that way for the rest of your life. Because then the weight you lose is going to stay off you for the rest of your life. Did you follow that? Temporary weight loss is of no benefit. You can't say, oh, I'll just do this keto diet or this paleo diet to drop some weight and then I'll start to eat healthy. No, it doesn't work that way. And you pay a price for every cigarette you smoke. You know what I mean for that? You pay a price for every bagels and locks that you have served yourself. You're shortening your life. With every time you eat carcinogenic food, you're shortening your life. Why do that? There are healthy things that are just, just as good. And when you get healthy, your taste gets stronger. And you enjoy food, food more, and you pleasure out of intellectual appreciation, an aesthetic appreciation for the beauty of that food. Now, I was, I was in California last week, and I was cutting open a passion fruit. And all the liquidy water in there with those seeds that you chew. And I'm going, what a marvel of nature this is. It's like such a thing of beauty that has the fruit has this harder shell on the outside, to keep the water inside to supply clean water to us. And it has these anti-cancer seeds full of lignans and all these phytochemicals that have been cancer that are rich in... It's like an, I'm just saying that, that nature put into these, all these foods that we can gather and find in, that are so incredibly adjust at one, meshed with our body to give, us, to give us incredible health. We have this opportunity to have incredible taste sensation 
at the same time with appreciating the wonder and beauty of these foods that make us live long and protect us. Disease is unnatural. We have a body that's disease resistant. We just have to supply it with the right substances.